All right, so as always, thank you for starting us off. Back in Korea, the daily tally, as so I mentioned, remains on the 3,000 level. And for more on the local transmission trend, Choi Min Jong joins me now. Min Jong, welcome back. Thank you for having me, Sunny. Right, so Korea has been noting a decline in recent days. Tell us more. Well, the fourth wave has been ongoing for nearly six months now, but daily cases have been trending downward since the end of last month. We're also seeing a decline in the number of daily infections among teenagers. According to the Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education, around 1,200 students from kindergarten to high school contracted COVID-19 in the past week. This is, a, this is a drop of more than 640 cases from the previous week. However, authorities remain cautious due to the spread of Omicron. A cluster infection was reported at a military base in Jeollanamdo province, and at least one person there has tested, tested positive for the Omicron variant. Korea also reported its first two fatalities that have been linked to the Omicron variant. According to health authorities on Monday, both were nursing center residents in their 90s in the, in the southwestern city of Gwangju. They also had underlying health conditions, including cancer, diabetes, and dementia. One of them was 98 years old, who tested positive for the Omicron variant post-mortem, while the other patient was 90 years old. Although her test results are still pending, authorities say there is a strong possibility that her death is related to the variant as well. Right, Min Jung, and on the topic of Omicron, what measures are in place perhaps to better control the potential spread of this new variant here in the country? Well, the authorities are currently anticipating that the Omicron variant will become the dominant strain in South Korea soon. So they are planning to make changes to the current prevention measures um, to prepare a further spread. First, authorities are examining whether an antigen test could be used to identify COVID-19 cases more quickly. The method is simpler than a PCR test and results come out in less than an hour. But to ensure accurate testing, officials say they have to be carried out at medical centers instead of being self-administered after buying the test kits from pharmacies or supermarkets. And because the Omicron variant is known to be less fatal than the Delta variant, officials are also reviewing plans to allow clinics to treat COVID-19 patients. Right. Also in related news, Minjung, what has been the public response to the validity clause added to our vaccine pass system? Right. Um, as you know, um, beginning this week, an expiration date has been added to our vaccine passes, making them only valid for six months. So those who have been fully vaccinated before July 7th last year or those who haven't been vaccinated are not allowed to enter most facilities. Well, on the first day of implementation, not everything went smoothly. Some restaurant and cafe owners found the system to be complicated because they had to explain the new policy to customers who weren't fully aware of the change. Let's take a listen. The fact that we have to explain how to use the app is a big loss for us. There are customers who just leave if they don't get their drinks in five minutes. It would have been much easier for us if the government had explained it better. The measure also has come into opposition from those who are either unwilling or unsure about getting an additional vaccine dose. Yet on the other hand, there are people who say that the expiration dates are necessary to encourage people to get their booster shots. We cannot avoid getting shots because the effectiveness of the vaccine does not last forever. Right, I see. So there is a bit of conflict there. All right, Min Jung, thank you for that. But stay with us for the extended talk.